am the biggest Yu-Gi-Oh fan you'll ever meet. And if you're questioning why I'm covering this on an anime channel, don't worry, it's an anime. So uh, hold that L. So look, if you have watched Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm assuming you either have the card game or you watch the anime. You see me as your local weeb duelist, I started off as a kid with the cards. I'm talking about going to Walmart to beg your mother to pick up a nine pack. That sounds kind of crazy for some reason. But regardless, as a kid, whether you knew how to play the game or not, it was fun to collect the cards. And while the journey continued on having, I don't know, maybe about seven different series, I don't really care about all these other series. Majority of us started off with just you. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yugi Moto. And well, when it comes to Yugi Moto, as well as his alternate BA personification, the Pharaoh, they just hit different, dog. And in this video, I'm going to absolutely fanboy about this series. But since there's so much to talk about, let's just talk about the original series for now. At the time it came out, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series was something different and has not been replicated to this day. An anime based off of the card game, however, was popular because of the card game. Huh? That's right, take that brain teaser. The original Yu-Gi-Oh! series was pretty simple when you look at it. Just like us, the characters wanted to collect the Yu-Gi-Oh cards just to have them for collection purposes. And I mean characters were willing to put down a hefty amount to get a rare card. And that's even true if they already have the other card with multiple copies. And since Yu-Gi-Oh started off as a collection, it was pretty simple just to get as many cards as you can that are rare. And that being said, many characters did not care what they had to do to get what they wanted. And I'm talking about the antagonist Seto Kaiba bullying an old man. <laughs> yeah, they were like that. Within the original series, the characters would manipulate whoever they need to to get what they want. And majority of the times, it's straight up just to gamble out your cards. You could argue that a character cards that they have are more important than their own life. And of course, if the other character you're fighting against does not want to give you a bargain tray, then you have to fight for it. And that's where the series differentiates a character that is based or is not based. For example, the original character we see, Yugi Moto, is not based. He's simply not the best duelist and he doesn't have the confidence to be one anyway. However, you can have another character such as the Pharaoh who is based. Now this is what I was talking about before with a BA personification. In this series, you don't walk that talk, okay? You duel that talk. Every character within the series is ready to sling them words when it gets down and dirty. But you best believe you better have that dueling prowess to back that up. And of course, when you talk all that trash and then lose, <laughs> oh lordy. Now look, you're gonna see a vast amount of characters within the Yu-Gi-Oh! series and a lot of them don't matter. I'm talking about the bug looking dude Weevil that uses insect type cards. He's simply not important and only acts as an obstacle for our main characters to overcome. Which for the most part really doesn't matter because he acts as a canon filler, but I mean, hey, take it or leave it. When it comes to the original series, there's only a few characters you're really looking for. Of course, one of them is Seto Kaiba because he's just a blue eyes freak. And another one that plays a huge part is Pegasus. Just like our main character, Yugi Moto, Pegasus also had a Millennium item. And when you have access to a Millennium item, you usually have access to some weird ancient magic. But as far as you care about, most of these characters have another persona. And when it comes to Pegasus being a character, he also is able to use a tune deck. It's actually pretty interesting because you're just seeing other cards in a tune format. And I would recommend you to watch the Pegasus arc because it is fun to see. But the series does not stop here, not until we get introduced to Yami Bakura, or I guess the real name for this character is Merrick. Just like Yugi, Bakura has another personification named Merrick. And Merrick, as well as some other loser characters, are now introducing the Shadow Realm, a place at which a character can be sent to if they lose a duel. The Shadow Realm basically acts acts as if it's hell. But it's also a replacement of saying that character quote unquote died. However, this show is on four kids, so you're not going to be saying that. Anyway, when the Shadow Realm gets involved, this is when the series really picks up. You better duel for your life because one loss can equal everything being over. But when it gets down to the actual duelist, most characters do have a reason they duel for. But when it comes to Yugi Moto, the reason he's dueling is to get over his confidence issue. And I mean, that's fun to see, I guess. Throughout the series, multiple times, you'll see Yugi struggle with his own confidence. And at the end of the series, you'll see Yugi have to beat his Pharaoh to actually become a good duelist as himself. I mean, the Pharaoh could have honestly won. But of course, that was not the purpose of the series. It was instead to see Yugi gain confidence in himself. And to do that, he has to beat himself, his better self. 
And after that, Yuki can continue to be a duelist with his other friends that don't really match up to him. No matter what episode and what villain shows up in Yu-Gi-Oh, you won't really feel as if it's very dire. And they do a pretty good job adding the Shadow Realm into the game. But not too much later, another duelist can come by and just beat the guy that put them in the Shadow Realm, therefore they just kinda save the day. I don't know man, you're here for the shiggles. And speaking of the duels, we should also talk about the cards themselves. When it comes to the first series, Yu-Gi-Oh, it does a pretty good job job not overwhelming you with the amount of cards. You have monsters, monsters with abilities, traps, and spells. And as you get further within the series, you're then introduced to fusion cards. When it comes to the first Yu-Gi-Oh, fusion is pretty straightforward. You need this card with this card as well as polymerization to make this card. That's really it, nothing else to it. And if you're trying to get into Yu-Gi-Oh, I would recommend you to start here. I would say Yu-Gi-Oh GX, which is the sequel to this, isn't that bad either. But look, that's for another day. And I also must point out that Yugi is a magician character. And I'm not talking about him being a mime, I mean his signature card is a magician type. Which is unique because as we see other characters in the future, they use something else. An archetype that becomes a little bit repetitive. But while he does summon dragons throughout the series, he's the only one that doesn't have a unique dragon in his deck. Which is kind of fun as a viewer because the person that is using the big bad dragon is Kaiba. So I mean, I don't know, take that for what it's worth. Now, if I haven't given you enough evidence to check out the first original series, then you should check this out. I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! back with the original anime, and then I started picking up the cards and playing with friends, and then found out about local tournaments and just kept going from there. How did I get into Yu-Gi-Oh? Honestly, it was the anime. Uh, I saw it one morning as a kid. Got hooked ever since. Who you just heard from are huge competitive players from the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. I'm talking about the people that go to huge giant events and just sit there playing Yu-Gi-Oh! like it's a chain. While I'm not pointing you to go to one of these events because most likely if you just picked up Yu-Gi-Oh! you won't be competing here. And plus the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series cards are not viable at this point. But you heard what these people said. As they were children, one day they just woke up and Yu-Gi-Oh! was on. And of course they're most likely talking about the original series of anything. Most of the newer anime series for Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't air on TV stations anymore, so most likely if anything they're talking about the first two or maybe three series. And plus they're clearly not a kid at this point, so I mean they had to be younger. And if they are talking about the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh! then this is what got them into where they are today. Again, I don't expect you to come out here and compete, I mean I haven't done it myself. Before a strategic card game, many of them get involved because of the anime. Now I will say the anime did age just like everything else in the world, however it did stand the test of time. But anyway, enough of me rambling, if you want to check out the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, I suggest you start here. And if you're already a part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, let me know what you think of the first series in the comments down below. I'm kind of stoked to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX next, but that's if you want to see it. So if you made it to this point of the video, I would greatly appreciate it if you show some love to the channel. And with that, go check out some Yu-Gi-Oh! or go check out my other video over there. Until next time, y'all take care, have a good one.